Hi everybody, this is Simona from Vector Twist. In this tutorial today about typography, I would like to show you a really neat effect that you can create here in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to be working with the Appearance panel, and the Appearance panel really has some hidden features. It's often underused, and you can create some really great things with it. And if you apply it to text, especially live text, you can change the text and make alterations to it over and over again. And that's not all. At the end, we can even create a graphic style out of it. Simply by applying the graphic style to your new text, you can create many neon type effects like this one that you see here on the screen. Now let me show you how we can do this. Now the first thing that we need to do here in Illustrator, we need to add some text. Right now you see the letters W O W or WOW, and I simply used Myriad Pro. I set the size to approximately 240 points, stretched it 75, and that's pretty much it. I turned on the stroke in black so we can see it. After that, it always helps to add an image right away. So if I open up my layers panel here, let me turn on the image I've chosen to show the neon text effect. Here it is, this image I grabbed from Pixabay. It's a concrete wall and free to use. So just go over to Pixabay and download it. The first thing we want to do, we want to turn off the stroke. Just keep the text selected. Right now you don't see it, but you can see a red line indicating that it is selected. Then we're going to open up the appearance panel. Now the little icon for the appearance panel is this round one here, the circle with the dots around. So let's open this up and let's drag it out, because we'll be working with the appearance panel for this whole tutorial here to create our neon text effect. Now on the bottom here you can see you can add things. You can add stroke, a fill and effects. The appearance panel will have layers, just like your regular layer panel. So the stacking order is really important. Now the first thing we want to do, we want to add a stroke. Now we're going to, with the text still selected, we're going to press the button here, add new stroke. It will add a stroke in black. So you can simply open up the stroke panel here and set it to eight points. Then when we open up the color here for the stroke, we're going to choose white. Now we're going to click on the stroke again and that will give us the flyout menu of the stroke options. We have eight points in white and that's it. The next step, we're going to do is select the dashed line. And I've already played around with the numbers, so when I select the dashed line, it remembered what I had put in before. And we set the first dash to zero points, then the gap to 25 points, and then the next dash to 175 points. And as you can see, it will create this effect here. Now, with the stroke layer here still selected, we'll go and add a new effect. So we're going to the bottom, We'll click Add New Effect, and we're going to find Blur, and then we're choosing Gaussian Blur. When we click it, we get the pop-up, and now let's set this to 3 pixels. We can check the preview, see if we want higher or lower, and if we are satisfied, we'll click OK. After that, we're going to add another stroke. We want this stroke to be on top of the one we've just created, so make sure that the layer is selected. Then again, we're clicking on the add new stroke. It will repeat the one that we've just added, so we can simply just change the size to four points. We'll open the stroke panel here, we'll setting it to round for both cap and corner, and the dashed line will keep the same. And then we're going to repeat this. Again, we'll choose add new stroke. This time it will be four points as well. And then we're going to change the color into a bright red, and then we're going to add an effect. We're going to add an effect of offset path. So simply down here, we'll click the add new effect again, and in the pop-up we're going to look for path, and then choose offset path. Here in the pop-up we're going to choose 9 points. So just to check the preview here, we offset the stroke that we've just created, and we are setting it 9 points outside. So let's click OK. And while we're at it, we're just going to continue this. Again, we are add new stroke, again it repeated the steps we've just done. So we can simply alter it, we'll change it to three points, we're going to choose an orange, we're going to offset it as well, so we can just add new effect, path, offset path, and this time for the offset we're going to set 14, we'll check the preview to see what it looks like, if we like it we'll press ok, and then we're clicking on the strobe, and now we want to change the dash line a little bit. Instead of 
25 for the gap. We're going to set it to 32 and then the dash again. We're changing it to be 137. While we're at it, we're going to have a look at the red one too, the red stroke we've added. So we'll click the stroke panel and here we'll change the dash line as well. We always keep the first one, the first dash to zero and then the gap to 54 and then the dash, let's set it to 101. Now these numbers are really up to you. I've played around with those numbers, so it really depends what you want to try out. Really, these numbers are not set in stone, so play around with them and see what kind of effect you can achieve. After that, again, same thing, new stroke. This time, let's choose a green. We'll set the stroke to 8 points. We'll click the stroke panel. I think we're going to keep the dashed line. Maybe we'll just move it up a few times. You can always just place the cursor and use the arrow keys up and down on your keyboard to alter the numbers simply so you don't have to type anything. And then we're going to add again a Gaussian blur. So this we find in the effects, blur, Gaussian blur. And this time we're going to set it to 10 pixels. Let's check the preview and that makes it really blurred. So let's press OK. And then we'll add another green stroke, 8 points as well. Same setting for the dashed line, but we're not going to Gaussian blur it, but we're going to add an offset path. So back to the effects, find path, offset path, and here we're going to set it to 23 pixels. Let's check the preview, and I think that looks pretty good. Now we press OK, and maybe we want to change it this time into a rounded stroke. So let's click the stroke panel. It is still rounded. Let's check the other one. Maybe we can turn this off here. And we need to add another offset path, I totally forgot about that, to the first green stroke. So simply click on the stroke to highlight it, so you know that you're going to add this effect to this particular stroke. It acts just like as a layer. So we're going to the Add Effect, Path, Offset Path, and let's set it to, let's try 19 pixels. So let's preview it, and that just blurs it a little bit more to the outside. I think I like that, so let's press OK. In case you want to alter anything, these are life effects, so they're not set in stone. You can play around with them. Let me quickly show you. If I click on the stroke here, if I want to play a little bit with the dashed line, watch what happens. You can see that I can easily alter it. That really depends what you're going for. So let's add one more stroke. So I'm going to click it, same steps as before, change it to white. I think I want to add a really faint stroke of white. So let's set it to two points. Of course, we need another offset. So back to the effects, path, offset path. Let's try really to set it right on top of the green one. So the last time we've chosen offset 23 pixels. Let's check it. As you can see now, it falls right on top of the green stroke we've added, which gives us another little bit of an interest here. And then we press OK. Maybe we want to blur it a little bit. So I keep the stroke layer activated. Add another effect of Gaussian Blur, this time really faintly, so let's type 0 0.3. Let's check the preview. Just gives it a little bit of a blur and we press OK. And that's it. We're almost done. We just have to do one more thing. Now if we have here the Appearance panel and we've added a lot of strokes, let's just go all the way to the bottom, where you see Opacity Default. Let's highlight that and let's add one more effect. Let's add a Drop Shadow. So now if I click on the effect, we're going to stylize, drop shadow, and as you can see here, opacity I've set to 59%, x-axis offset is minus 16 pixel, y is 5 pixels, and blur is 9 pixels. The color is black, and if I check the preview here, you can see now it looks like our neon text effect is actually set on our concrete background here. So let's click OK. Now I want to show you one last thing. Let's add all of these effects that we've added to the text to a graphic style. So let's go to Window and open up the Graphic Style panel. Let me drag it out here. Now all we have to do is, with the text selected, we'll just drag it into the Graphic Style. You can see we've added it. We can double click it. In the Graphic Style options, we call it Neon Effect, and then we press OK. Now pay close attention. If I type any new text, so I'm just using the type tool and I'll type too cool. Of course you can't see it now. We need to make it a little bit bigger. So again, I'll make it really big. Let's just make it 170 points. Stretch it out. You can see the text here. Let me take away the appearance panel. And then I'm just simply clicking the graphic style here 
while the text is still selected and watch what happens. Now I've added all of those strokes that we've just added to the appearance panel to the new text with one single click. Of course we might want to tweak the text a little bit and stretch it out even further. So let's stretch it out 200 and maybe even a little bit more. Let's set it to 260 and that's it. And the best part is that you can just change the type. It is live text. Let's say you wanted to change it just to, to, to cool. So you can change the text into anything without losing the graphic style or what appearance you've added. Now isn't that fantastic? Of course, you can still alter the appearance as well. For example, the one we've just worked on. Let's open up the appearance panel again. We could simply change all of those settings here and make a new one and then drag it back into the graphic styles and then you have a new graphic style, a different kind of neon effect for example. And that's it for now. I hope you had fun creating this little fun effect here in Illustrator. And remember the appearance panel is really something nifty. I would love to see some of your neon type effects. So if you play around with this, please send them to me. I'll post them. And also don't forget to subscribe here to the channel Vector Twist. See you next time.